congratulations on creating such an amazing show. Um, we've been, and you're wearing the iconic t-shirt that Rachel was wearing in the first episode. So one thing that I think is so cool about Unreal is it's not just a show of a female protagonist. It is a show of numerous interesting three-dimensional flawed female characters, and it is about a woman's world, you know, the bachelor and romance. Were you consciously trying to subvert the trope of the male anti-hero that, you know, the true detective thing is now hopefully killing? Yes, we were completely consciously trying to subvert the patriarchy, 100%. We, um, but we also, it's so natural to us, I think Marty and I both write really strong female characters, so it wasn't really much of an effort, it was just how we naturally write. So we just wanted to have, like, really complex characters, and we talked a lot about Breaking Bad, and that we have to let, like, there be female Walter White, female Don Draper, and female Tony Soprano. And that doesn't mean they're totally screwed up or despicable, it's just that they get to be really flawed. Yeah, and the show got darker and darker yeah. as the season went on. Um, how did you decide how far to take it and keep the characters still sympathetic? Um, you know, we didn't really worry about the characters being sympathetic. We just sort of believe in them and love them, and so we let that take care of itself. And we didn't hold ourselves back at all. We just went as far as we wanted to go, and we went as, to the point, you know, we took ourselves right to that. And what can you preview about the finale? Um, the finale, oh my god, the finale is such, for me, it's like really one of my favorite episodes. Um, I think everything, everything comes out in the wash. Everything that Rachel has done catches up with her, which is really incredible. She burns her life all the way to the ground. Um, there's love, there's heartbreak, there's almost marriage. It's a very, it's a great episode. Um, you've been renewed, which is awesome. Have you started thinking about season two yet, and what's going to be happening? Yeah, you know, we talked about season two. I think the only thing we know is that we're going to stick with the everlasting format with a different different cast on Everlasting and probably a twist to the format. We might move locations. We've talked about a tropical location. We've talked about dealing with the race issue more because it's one that we're really passionate about and just sort of breathed over. In the first well, I'm glad you brought that up because a yeah. like, question that came for me from Twitter said yeah. they like the way you highlighted in the first episode that the black women were consciously told to play to a stereotype. Yeah. And then they said, and then Shamiko basically had no storyline for the rest of the show. Yeah. Um, is that going to be addressed next season? Yeah, it might be. I mean, the hard thing is, you know, with the show, you only have so much time. And so that's why we gave her her exit line, which is, this has been a supreme waste of my time. Because we kind of felt like, you know, unfortunately, we can we can service that, that storyline much more, given everything else we were dealing with this season. But it's something that we're very passionate about seeing in the future. And um, has having your own show given you insight into what the Quins and the Chets of this world go through? <laughs> it's so funny. There's a BuzzFeed. There's a BuzzFeed quiz right now about are you more Rachel or are you more Quinn? And I was like, I'm gonna take it, and I just did it. And I'm like, of course I'm Rachel. And I was like, you're Quinn. And I was like, oh my god, I've become Quinn. But yeah, so writing a show is a lot of work. Uh, we all have worked very hard. There's a big writing staff. It's it's a lot. And um, I have to say, I love that Rachel has his name is like Rachel Goldberg, that she is overtly Jewish. It is the first time as like a California non-religious Jew myself that I've really seen that portrayed on television. Um, Lifetime, you know, it's sort of perceived as this very middle American show. Yeah. Were they cool with that or did you have to fight for it? The best thing about all this stuff is that everyone had to have a conversation about it. It was just a given them that it was fine. And having a Jewish, having a Jewish main character actually it didn't even cross my mind that it was a thing but now that we've aired a lot of people are saying things my friend who's Israeli was like it's a huge deal in Israel because there's a Jewish main character and I didn't really think about it so and final question yeah. yesterday Chris Harrison sort of dissed um, Unreal. He yeah. seemed to sort of think that you were insulting in, as an American institution as baseball or something by saying The Bachelor was less than wholesome. Um, what's your response to that? I think, you know, we're just flattered that he watched it. <laughs> you know, I think he's really happy with the show. We love it. The critics seem to like it. We can't wait to make season for you. And it's, I'm sorry he doesn't like it. I'm sorry. Nothing more than that. That's it. Great.